Today, we're cheating the system. Five years ago, I released a video where I cut some bangs on this very, very pretty wig. Now, the video did very, very well and you guys absolutely loved it. But one of the most recurring comments that I received on that video was how did I get that insane hair color? This gorgeous powder blue minty color that I had. Now, the funny thing is that at the time I didn't film it. And the even funnier thing is that I didn't even realize that I broke every single hairdressing rule to get that color. Because I got that very specific baby blue powder blue color from the very darkest hair pigment that we have black today I'm gonna to teach you how to get it So one of the things that we are taught as stylists is a set of rules that every single hair stylist has to follow. And it is with these rules that we are then able to analyze and work out how we're going to get to the end stage of whatever it is we're after. But once you kind of learn all the rules, you can technically break them as you wish, so long as you know what the end outcome is going to be. Now, it appears that five years ago, I was light years ahead of myself now because I just, I did this hack without even so much as batting an eyelash. In my mind, I was like, I think this is gonna work and it absolutely did. Today, we're going to be using a black hair dye to get this blonde wig to a baby blue hair color or silver or any ash color. Literally, we're just aiming for a cool color. How exactly does that work? This is a tube of permanent hair dye. This one right here is by Q. This one is actually a drugstore color. It is a good brand. And for it being a drugstore color, it looks good. Now this is technically black, but the correct term is actually blue black. What that means is that while the color is literally a level one shade, which means that it virtually has no lightness to it, it tends to reflect on a blue scale. It has a blue sheen that when you pass sunlight through it, light through it, it picks up a gorgeous blue black, almost shimmer. Hair colors are made up of their depth pigment and then their tone pigment. The depth or the shade range refers to how dark a hair color can get. Dye ranges from level one, which is darkest, it is black, to a level 10, which is lightest at blonde. But then you can add in virtually any other tone after that. And the secondary and tertiary numbers after that, in this case, this is one point one, refers to then what shade is given to it. Point one is typically an ash. So we know from that concept that this is a level one depth or darkness and a level one in terms of tonality, referring to it having an ash or a blue pigment. Today, we're going to miraculously ignore the first half of this equation and focus only on the blue range. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Now this video can get a little bit stressful because we are working with notoriously the most difficult hair pigment we could work with. That is why today's sponsor is so amazing. Today's sponsor is Match Masters, an incredibly fun and captivating mobile game that allows you to pass the time relax and calm down before a particularly exciting hair transformation. It is incredibly fun to play against your friends or your family, or if you're on a first date, it is something amazing to help break the ice. It is a really fun game of matching up the shapes against your opponent, and the more you manage to match up, the more you're likely to win. I urge you to download the game if you want to disconnect a bit or if you want to play something fun and something that gets you hooked but doesn't require a lot of thinking and is incredibly stress-free. Matchmasters are making it also even more exciting because they are giving away 10 $200 Amazon gift cards. Download Matchmasters from the link below or the QR code on the screen, collect 50 stars and have a chance of winning it. By downloading Matchmasters, you are directly supporting my YouTube channel. So thank you. Download it play a little bit before we get right into this incredibly nerve-wracking but un hair transformation. I lost. <laughs> Let's mix this up. It's such a pleasant smell. Oh my god. It's also really pretty. I'm gonna use the whole tube. This was 53 grams, so we're adding an equal 53 grams of developer. You need developer to activate it, okay, otherwise nothing happens. It's 
so pearlescent. Oh my god! Now we're actually going to let this oxidize a bit so we can see the pigment actually come through. Why we do that? I'm gonna pop on this way just so I can have a fun before and after portion. Anyways, we're gonna dye her black. It's a joke. It's a joke. Okay, now I have to move you to the basin. Come with me. Hi. We're at my basin. Um, you can do this anywhere. A tub that you don't really care about would work perfectly. A sink, your actual bathtub. But today I'm using my basin because I have it. Here's our dye. It's already starting to oxidize. You can see it's no longer beigey. It's more silvery in color. And this is, as you can see, that ash quality that we were on about. We're going to dilute it with a ton of water. Look how pretty, oh my god. Now we're gonna fill up our thing with water and dilute our dye in it. I am using my whisk to beat out any chunks of dye because chunks tend to like to stick to hair chunks and make the hair color uneven. And now for the fun part. We're going to grab our wig and we're going to submerge her completely all at once. More like a silvery. Blue. But anyways, we're going to let her sit or marinate in our dye soup for a little bit. These types of permanent dyes do actually need time to actually oxidize, but we're not going to let her oxidize fully. We're literally going to let her oxidize until we see that the color is blue enough, but not black, obviously. Whoops. <laughs> is there in the blue smudge already? There you go. There was a chunk. That is why it's already black, because there was a chunk. I'm going to just kind of monitor this because it can get dark very quickly. And then we're also going to need to shampoo her. It might actually turn just silvery more than a powdery blue. It's been literally two minutes. It's already looking very silvery. Okay, guys, it's not going to be powder blue. Look how pretty. Oh my god. This is what I do. I marinate my hair. Okay, that's it. Now we have to shampoo it really good to stop the process because this will turn black. It wants to turn black, we're gonna stop it turning black. Okay, team, to wash it off. And we're again using just a shampoo bath method. When washing wigs, because they are very delicate and usually extremely expensive, use a shampoo bath method where you fill up the shampoo first in the basin and then you dunk your wig in it. Don't be rubbing at it. We're going to stop the hair dye process. You can see there's still all that dye stuck on it. And also wash the dye off the hair. But look at all this blue pigment. The roots are still looking quite golden. I don't mind it because I'm trying to experiment with more with mixing silvers and golds. But realistically, you could always just go over the roots directly or you just leave it in longer. But I kind of like it. So now the goal is just to stop the reaction and stop it from turning black. The best hair mask for wigs. I don't know why, it, ju it just is. I'm almost out though. Boo. And here is our beautiful, not blonde, definitely not black, gunmetal gray wig. I'm gonna let this dry for a while because I don't like applying heat on a wet wig. I like to just let it air dry. And then we're going to see truly what the color looks like in studio lighting. But so far, science, bitch. Anyways, I'll see you. A few hours later, are we ready to see her? 
Oh my god. Ignore the state that she's in. I had to dry it under my air conditioning unit hung upside down. So she's frizzy and dry, okay? But that's not the judgment here. This is the hair color that we have. It is the most beautiful gray that we got from black. Blue, black, permanent pigment that, you know, that notoriously difficult pigment? We got her. However, I can feel you judging her very, very harshly. So I'm gonna go ahead, glue this on, and I'm gonna style her, and then I'm gonna come back and show you the very finished result because she deserves it. But oh my God, am I happy. This is probably one of my absolute favorite ways to dye hair very, very quickly. I don't know that it would work on a living person because you'd have to dunk their whole head in the basin because it does act very quickly otherwise. But nonetheless, if you're in a pinch and you need gray dye or whatever color dye and you only have permanent color, let me glue her on. Okay, I'm halfway through styling this wig and I'm thinking to myself, could it be cute? This is what the wig actually looks like at the moment. This was my butterfly cut wig. So it's got a very kind of choppy haircut. And I'm like, holy shit, a shag bob with like layers and loose bits would be so cute. So I'm making it clear. This is not educational. This is probably gonna be the worst technical haircut ever, but it is going to look cute because I'm gonna make sure of it. Just don't follow it yourself. I'm going to try not to cut a single piece of hair like that. I really, really want it to be a shag cut. I really don't feel like there being any straight edges anywhere. So highly don't recommend doing this on yourself. Highly don't recommend it. So I do love the front and I don't want to touch it. Waive their privacy, that's not really the issue. You have to talk to the local general. Wrong way. Why don't you tell us what you can share with us? It means we're on the right track. I'd like another crack at the base, Doctor. Second time for us now. You really gotta wanna die to do this. This is why I love hair. Specifically, hair styling. Let me, I wanna switch off my air conditioning just so everyone can hear what I'm gonna say. To be good at hairdressing, to be good at hairstyling, there are a set of rules that you have to follow, whether you're doing it on yourself or whether you're doing it on a client. But to be a great hairdresser, you can then use those rules to break them, to get incredible results. This hair color I got from using blue black dye level one this thing should have been midnight blue pitch black blue and if i let it oxidize and process for the amount of time that was written on the sheet i would have gotten exactly what was promised it would have delivered and if you're willing to experiment you can get something incredible and you can just take bits and pieces of what the product has to offer you and use only those in this case i knew that blue black as a dye is made up of really really dark pigments but also is made up of blue pigments, of silver pigments, to add that blue-black quality to the dye. And I knew that if I didn't let it process for the perfectly allocated amount of time, it will give me a much, much lighter, more diluted version of the end color. Beautiful silver gray. And I also cut the hair in probably the most unhinged way possible. This kind of shaggy, it's loose, it's nothing choppy, it conveys as like an unserious person, and with the bangs it's giving character, like video game character. I will say one thing, disclaimer, the very first time I did exactly this, I used a completely different brand of dye, and the end color wasn't a silver color, it was a powder blue color. This time I used a different brand and it gave me a silver color. I was satisfied with both of them, I was just aiming for an ashy blue color, but it is one of the things that be aware of it. Not all dyes are going to perform exactly the same. However, each one is going to have a similar concept. You can do this with a super dark red if you want a very light pink. You can do this with a very, very vivid copper if you want the slightest hint of a peach. And you could do this with every shade of dye that is much darker if you want a lighter version of that color. Only do this if you want to experiment. Also, it is the easiest to do it on a wig or extensions just because it's pretty difficult to dunk your entire head 
into a bucket of something. This only works because you're applying the dye all at once. If you were to do it section by section, it would process at different times and you would get a very uneven result. You're welcome. I am going to be linking all of the products down below. However, everything that I used, minus the wig, was drugstore or very easily or cheaply. You can get everything off of Amazon, get a good pair of gloves and get yourself a box or a top that you don't really care about. And I'm also going to be linking a match masters, download it, play and win. Everything's going to be down there or you can do it from the QR code on the screen. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, join the seller fam. Let's learn a thing or two together there and i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you'll give it a go and i will see you in my next video bye babies